readings and homily for the fifth Sunday of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas went back through Lystra and Iconium to Antioch. They put fresh heart into the disciples, encouraging them to persevere in the faith. We all have to experience many hardships, they said, before we enter the kingdom of God. In each of these churches they appointed elders, and with prayer and fasting they commended them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. They passed through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. Then, after proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Italia and from there sailed to Antioch, where they had originally been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On their arrival, they assembled the church and gave an account of all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the pagans. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and they, your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God, to make known to men your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule lasts from age to age. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city in the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne. You see this city, here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke, Now I am making the whole of creation new. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had gone, Jesus said, Now has the Son of Man been glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself, and will glorify him very soon. My little children, I shall not be with you much longer. I give you a new commandment, love one another just as I have loved you. You also must love one another. By this love you have for one another, everyone will know that you are my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Tolstoy tells the story of a man who stopped to give alms to a beggar. To his dismay, he found that he had left his money at home. Stammering his explanation, he said, I'm sorry, brother, but I have nothing to give you. Never mind, said the beggar, the word brother means more to me than money. Now, according to Catholic teaching, the church is first and foremost about people, not bricks and mortar. The first reading today emphasizes this point. It says, when Paul and Barnabas assembled at Antioch, they assembled the church, that is, of course, the people, and gave an account of how God had used them to open the door of faith to the unbelievers. God can also use us, if we let him, Firstly, to strengthen each other's faith in the church community, and secondly, 
to make us more credible disciples of Christ to people outside the visible church. When the retired Pope Benedict was launching the Year of Faith in 2013, he wrote, The door of faith is always open for us, inviting us into a life of deeper communion with God. But it should at the same time lead to a deeper communion with each other in the church community. We can't separate communion with God from communion with the people of God. They go hand in hand. I was at a talk some time ago in the pastoral centre given by an American priest on how to make the church more appealing to people, especially those who have stopped coming to Mass. He said, not only must we love Jesus, but we must also love his church. When people say they believe in God and don't believe in the church, then they're missing the point completely. That's like saying, I believe in royalty, but I don't believe in the monarchy. Without the church, for a start, there would be no mass. This is the cement which binds the community together. The Vatican II says the sacrament of the Mass, the sacrament of the Eucharist, is a sign of unity and a bond of charity among ourselves. Without the Mass, it would be like building a house without concrete. It easily collapses. If Christ didn't think that the Church was important, then he wouldn't have founded it. It's as simple as that. Our job as church people is to allow the door of our personal faith to open wide so that, like Paul and Barnabas mentioned in the reading today, we can draw new people into the church community in order that their Christian lives may be shaped by the saving words of the gospel and bear fruit in good works by a worthy reception of the Holy Eucharist. When Paul and Barnabas assembled the church in Antioch, they set about giving an account of all that God had done through them. Here we see Christ and his church working in tandem. The church is described as an extension of the presence of Christ in the world. And as church members, he gives all of us, you and me and everyone else in the church, the honor of being his partners in furthering his kingdom. Christianity, you must remember, is a divine human partnership. The church doesn't exist for his own sake in order to build up a power pace a power base in the world, but it exists as God's instrument in furthering his kingdom of love in this world. Love is the cement which binds the church community together. Our credibility as the people of God rests on it. Thank you all for listening, and God bless you all.